Okay, for integrated two, this is the 1.3.3, and we're gonna go ahead and finish up the angles formed by a transversal. So uh, just to be clear, our first essential skill is going to be uh, angle properties themselves. So really it's a whole mess of angles that you're gonna to need to know and know the vocabulary, know what it means to justify, all of that type of stuff. And the uh, appropriate equations that go ahead and match these things together. So if we take a look at 1-93, oh, this is gonna be a combination of some book problems and from the notes as well. So suppose angle A in this picture is 48 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark 48 degrees for that angle. So I know that this is gonna be 48 degrees. Okay, so what we wanna do is we use what we know about angle pair relationship to determine angle B, uh, the measure of angle B. All right, so you could do a whole bunch of stuff here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use Mm, I don't know. I think I'm going to do corresponding first. So I'm going to take that angle A here and I'm going to move it down. So notice that it is below the line. So below the parallel line and to the left of the transversal. So I'm going to slide down the transversal and I'm going to try to get these guys to land up together. So I know that this angle down here is also going to be 48 degrees. Then if you take a look at the relationship between angle B and the 48 degrees, so just kind of focusing in right there, we have another relationship here and that is vertical angles. So I think I can go ahead and say that B itself is also going to be 48 degrees. So if I went through and I wrote out my reasoning here, the first one that I would write out, so just kind of color code, is that I used corresponding angles. So the red was corresponding. And then that led into the next reason that I used, which was vertical. So I was able to determine the size of angle so I would say that the measure is B. B is not identified as the angle itself. So I would say that B is equal to 48 degrees as well. Okay, so just having problems seeing the relationships, when I translate along a line, I notice it's an image, and angle B are a pair of vertical angles. That way I know that the angles A and B must be congruent. Okay, so we're gonna use some tracing paper. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can find whether the angles might also kind of work out. So be sure to state whether or not what we're doing. Now these can be done a whole bunch of different ways. So one of the things that I would recommend that you do is just, you can use the uh, vertical angles that we have used. You could use the corresponding angle that we've used. You can use the supplementary as well. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to kind of move your way around this picture. So um, why don't you go ahead and pause. I'm gonna work on number one and then I'm going to uh, unpause so then you guys can take a look at it and see how we did. Okay, so taking a look at one, I went through and tried to color code this. So I took angle A and I found a corresponding angle, color coded that red and moved that down. Then I have A and B right next to each other. And if I put them together, I am gonna get a straight line. So I have this idea of supplementary. So A plus B is equal to 180 degrees. So then B is equal to 180 minus A, went ahead and manipulated that equation. So those two angles where they are, so angle A, the original, and angle B, the original, those two are going to be supplementary to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight here on this one that this is supplementary. All right, let's give two a shot. Okay, so taking a look at two, I went through and I moved A down again, it's kind of color coding as I'm going using corresponding. Then I noticed that A and B are actually vertical to each other. So I used red because I know that vertical angles are gonna be congruent to each other. So I would say vertical, and then I'm under the impression that they're identifying these as the actual measure, so I went ahead and just said that A is equal to B. Okay, let's go ahead and try the third one. Okay, so taking a look at three, I went through and kind of slid my way around the shape again. So I used the idea of corresponding, so I slid A down. Now you could have been sliding B up the transversal as well, it just kind of depends on the way that you choose to take a look at this. So I slid it down using corresponding that we talked about last class, and then I see that A and B, when you put them together, do make a straight line. So the relationship on three and the relationship on one both give us supplementary, whereas the relationship in two gives us vertical, therefore congruent. Okay, 
on the next page here, we're now taking a look at 94. All right, so now we're actually getting introduced to the vocabulary words that go along with this. And I'll be honest with you, the names do make sense. So if you really stop and look at them, except for maybe the complementary and the supplementary, but everything else in the transversal world here with the parallel lines, the names are explanatory. So if we were to take a look at the name of this one, we have alternate. So alternate means opposite side of the transversal. Interior. Interior means that they are both both inside, or if you want to think of between the parallel lines. I always think of between the parallel lines. So if I pushed the parallel lines together, then the two angles would kind of get squished in between the two. So if you take a look at this, and we take a look at our parallel lines, I'm going to go ahead and highlight those guys for just a second. So we'll highlight our parallel lines, which we know they're parallel because they've got the floating arrows on them. We can highlight the transversal as well as the line that connects them. And then we want an angle that is inside. So it is uh, between the parallel lines and on one of the sides of the transversal. So if we take a look at this one that's already shaded here, then we know that that represents one angle that is interior. So it's between the two parallel lines. Now what we're gonna wanna do to find its alternate interior partner is we're gonna take this angle here and we're gonna jump across the, across the transversal. And then we're gonna slide down. So we wanna jump across and then slide down the transversal. So those two angles we would refer to as alternate interior. And we just did on a previous problem that these two are actually going to be congruent to each other. But there is another pair as well. So if we take a look back at the picture, we color coded one of them. And let's see if we can color code the other pair. So I'm going to go back up to the top parallel line again. I want to be in between the red lines. So I'm going to color code this orange. So that's one of the angles. Now to find its partner, you're going to jump across the transversal and stay between the parallel lines. So its partner is going to be right there. We know that alternate interior angles are going to be congruent to each other. That's something that we already determined. So the other pair, and I would just color code them in the notes so I know that the orange goes with the orange and the green goes with the green. Um, you know, think about the relationship between the pairs of alternate interior angles. If the lines are parallel, are they always congruent? Yes, absolutely they are always congruent. So we want to complete the conjecture. And a conjecture is just a, um, an educated statement based off of some known facts or known knowledge. So if lines crossed by a transversal are parallel, then alternate interior angles are and we're going to say that they are congruent. Okay, now we've got another pair of angles. We have same side interior angles. Again, the name makes sense. So we have same side. That means that they are on the same side of the transversal. And then we have interior, interior, interior means that they are between the parallel lines. So if we take a look at this picture over here, we have same side. Notice that they are both on the right side of that transversal. So both of them are to the right. Then if we take a look at the parallel lines, you will see that both of the angles, 
if you push the parallel lines together, the angles would get squished. So they are interior as well. Okay, so what's the relationship between the angle measures of same side interior angles? Okay, so this is also one that we already took a look at, but I think I'm going to do a little bit of corresponding here and see if we can figure out what the angle relationship is. So if I take this angle on top and I'm going to highlight it in orange, I know that I can do corresponding. So corresponding means I'm just going to slide down the transversal and I want to stay in the same relative position. So if you take a look at this angle, this angle is currently to the right of the transversal and it is below the parallel line. So I'm going to keep sliding until I find something in the same relative location. So I want to go to the right of the transversal and below the parallel line. So that is also going to be an orange angle if you want to think about it that way. So I know that those two are congruent to each other. Now I want to compare that orange angle to the shaded angle by F and see is there vertical angles involved or if what I'm looking at is a straight line when I put them together. Actually, what you're looking at is a straight line when you put them together. So I'm not going to color code an orange because they're not the same size. They don't have to be the same size. So that angle blue, so where F is located now, we wouldn't call it F, we would actually be a little bit more specific. I would say then, since the orange and the blue make a straight line, that we are not gonna say that these are necessarily congruent. We're going to say that they are supplementary because they make that straight line. So let's finish that statement on B. If lines crossed by a transversal are parallel, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay, now we're done with the textbook problems. Now we're going to jump to the framework of notes. And this is that whole big section here. And a whole bunch of these belong together. We already did corresponding. That was last class. We now have alternate interior angles. So alternate opposite sides of the transversal, interior trapped between the two parallel lines. So if we take a look at this picture, I have interior angles. The only interior angles I have here, so let's take a look at the, oh geez, these aren't marked parallel again. We need to do that. So let's go ahead and mark these guys parallel so we know. And then we'll go ahead and put our transversal in as well. Just kind of focusing on these things. Now, when we are talking about interior angles, the only ones that are interior are trapped between the two red lines. So three, four, five, and eight. Those are the only ones that we're talking about right now. Now, we're going to choose one of those. I think I'm going to start with three. So if I start with three here to find its alternate interior buddy, jump across the purple line, so you're on the right right now, go to the left, and slide down until you hit the other transversal. Because remember, you want to stay inside. And so I think three and eight go together. And if you look down here, we do have that three and eight go together. Likewise, if you go back to the picture, we have four and five. Those are the only other though the only uh, interior angles we have left. So we're going to choose four, and remember to find its partner. Jump across the purple line and slide down the transversal. You want to make sure you're going to hit the other parallel line, but stay inside. So stay between those two. Don't go past the parallel lines. So four and five is our other pair. Okay. Then we also have same side interior angles. So we take a look at this. We want to color code our parallel lines, which are still not marked parallel. So let's go ahead and put our floating arrows on those guys. So those are parallel. Okay, then we need our transversal in here to take a look at as well. Now we're still only talking about interior angles, which means based off of this picture, we still only get to choose three, four, five, and eight. Those are the only interior angles. So if we start with three here, 
well, three is going to be same side, so stay on the right-hand side of the transversal. So stay on the same side that you're on. So same side, interior. So stay on the same side, slide down the transversal until you hit the other parallel line. But they are not the same size. And actually, if you take a look at them, it is should be obvious to us. It, just the way that the picture is drawn, yes, I know we don't want our eyes to deceive us one way or the other. However, if you take a look at these measurements, three is clearly an obtuse angle and five is definitely acute. So I would say that three and five, notice I'm not using the same colors, three and five are going to be same side interior. So I would say, if we take a look down at the bottom, three and five, so they're going to add up to 180 degrees. Now, I'm going to stick with the same colors because I know that some of these are going to match up. So if I were to start at five and I wanted to do alternate interior, I would jump across the purple line and slide up to the other parallel. But we know that alternate interior angles are congruent, so I can still keep using the blue pen on that. And then I get to do the same thing with the eight. Now, four and eight are not necessarily the same size. Same side interior angles definitely add up to 180 degrees, assuming that the lines are parallel. But I also know that angle three and angle eight are alternate interior. And that means that three and eight are going to be congruent to each other. So I've got three and eight congruent, four and eight are supplementary because they are same side interior. Okay, same side exterior. Hopefully you see what I mean by the names making sense. So same side. All right, let me guess. No, parallel lines aren't marked parallel. Okay, so let's fix that. So there's our parallel lines. Let's put some markers on there. And then let's put our transversal in. Oh, that one's off. There we go. Okay, so we want to do same side. So we're going to stay on the same side of the purple line. Exterior, though. Okay, so the exterior angles are 1, 2, 6, and 7. So if I start at angle 1. Now, I know that angle 1 is corresponding with angle 8. But that's inside. I don't want to do that. I want to stay outside. It's the exterior. And it's the same side. So if I keep going, I guess the question is, does angle 1 look like the same size as angle 7? And I don't think so. Not at all. One of them looks obtuse and the other one looks acute. So I'm going to grab a different colored pen. And I'm going to put 1 and 7 together. Now, if I slid 7 up to 4 using corresponding, then I know that the 4 and 1 would make a straight line. So I believe that same side exterior angles like 1 and 7 are going to be supplementary to each other, hence the add up to 180 degrees. Then I can do the exact same thing here. So if I were to slide seven up to four, then I know that four is vertical with two, and vertical means that they're congruent to each other. So I think I can color two blue. Okay, but we've already learned that the relationship between blue and green in this picture is that they add up to 180 degrees. So what we could do, because we're trying to get the other pair, is take the angle two, and if I slid it down to corresponding five, then I know that those would be congruent. I could have also done it with vertical angles on seven. But if I take a look at five and six together, they make a straight line. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that six is the same size as five. It just means that they are supplementary to each other. So I don't think we can put blue down there, but we do know the relationship between blue and green. And blue and green angles in this picture are supplementary. So if I take a look, I know that two and six are same side, so same side of the purple line, 
Exterior means that they are beyond the parallel lines. They're not between them. They're beyond them. Okay. Uh, we are only going to talk about alternate exterior angles now. We'll do triangle sum later, although triangle sum should look familiar. All right. Alternate exterior. Name makes sense. Really does. Now, I can't say that that's always the case, but in this case, when we're naming angles or the relationship between them, the naming of them is actually not bad. Some of the other stuff that we do, you're probably going to wonder where on earth we got that name from. But these ones, they make sense. So if we take a look, we have alternate exterior angles. So exterior, 1, 2, 6, and 7. Those are the only ones we have to choose from. So if I start at angle 1, I know that I can slide 1 down so that it is corresponding with 8. But if you take a look, 8 and 6 are vertical angles, which means 6 is also going to have to be green. So that means that 6 is green. Notice that the two green angles are alternate, opposite sides of the purple line, exterior. So they're still right next to the parallel lines, they're just not in between them. So I would say that 1 and 6 are congruent to each other which is true. Then likewise, we can do the same thing with the other corner using the exact same rationale. So starting up at two, we know that we could do corresponding with five, but then five and seven are vertical. So we know that seven is also going to be blue. And that is an alternate exterior angle with two. So 2 and 7 are going to be congruent to each other. And then we've already done corresponding, and we'll come back to triangle sum later. Okay, moving on. Now we're on uh, the page with a whole bunch of examples. We've kind of bounced around on that page. I think the only ones that we have left to do, let me see. I think we already did H, but we definitely need to do G and I. So I think let's start with G. Now, G is a little tricky. G is tricky only because we have a couple cells, a couple pairs of parallel lines. So we've got this pair of parallel lines here. Notice the double arrows, so we know that those guys go together. And then we have the other pair of parallel lines. We have the single arrow, so we know that those go together. Now, oddly enough, each one of these lines is a transversal to a pair of parallel lines. So you have to make sure that you don't jump parallel line or jump transversals to a whole other set of transversals or a whole other transversal. The only thing you can do with transversals is slide around them or do like a vertical relationship. So I'm going to try to move 65 to the X area. I don't know if it's going to land on X, but I'm just going to move it over there. So you can from 65, so I'm going to go ahead and color code this guy blue. You can from 65 slide up this red transversal, or you can slide to the right over the purple one. I think I'm going to go right. So if I take this 65 and I am going to go ahead and do corresponding and I'm going to slide to the right. So if I slide over here, that is also going to be a blue angle matching with the 65 because they are corresponding to each other. Now, I'm going to put 65 in this corner and I'll go ahead and state what I did. So the first thing that I did here so from here to here was corresponding. Then I still need to get up to where the X is located. You can do this a whole bunch of different ways. I think I can use corresponding again. So if I take the second 65, so now I'm over on the right side. So I'm right here. That's where I'm looking. What I can do is take that blue and slide it up so that it is corresponding with that angle X. So I think I can say that this is corresponding again. 
and I know that corresponding angles are congruent to each other. So I think X is 65 degrees as well. That is not the only way that you could have done this. This could have been done a whole bunch of different ways. Okay, moving on to I. All right, so I've got my parallel lines. I know this because I see the arrows floating on them. And I only have one pair of parallel lines this time. So that's kind of nice. And then I've got my transversal. I want to think about where these are in relation to the purple and the red lines. So I'm going to start up at the 2x. I noticed that the 2x is below the parallel line and it is to the right of the transversal. And I'm going to relate that over to, and I'm going to use a different color for now because I don't know if they're the same size or not. This one is above the parallel line and to the left of the transversal. So the first thing I would ask myself is if the angles are corresponding. And no, corresponding is just a slide up or down or over on the transversal. You're not allowed to flip over to the other side. So this is not corresponding. Um, then I'd ask myself, okay, it's not corresponding. Where am I with relation to the transversal itself? Am I alternate or same side? Well, I think these are alternate. They're clearly on opposite sides. So I would say that these angles are alternate. Now I have to determine if that is interior or exterior. So I think about pushing the two red lines together. If I push the two red lines together, notice that the 2x and the x plus 40 get squished. So they are both interior angles. So I would say these are alternate interior. All right, knowing what I know about alternate interior angles, I think I can change the color coding on that guy because alternate interior angles are congruent to each other, which means I can mark both of those blue. And since they are congruent to each other, I can now set them equal. So I would take the x plus 40 and set it equal to the 2x. Remember, congruent means they're exact same size. And then from here, I would go ahead and solve for 4x. So that's 40 and 2x minus x is just x. So it looks like I've got my justification and then I have my set up equation, and then I have the correct work that leads to my solution. And I think that that does our notes for this section.